There's the settling of the tribe, the becoming of the tribe in its current setting. Greetings, welcome to Rooted in Africa. This is who we are, this is what we embrace, and this is what we are made for. And today we're going to speak about who we are. My name is Ratho Govusani. As other people say, Tombo simple means Eve, as it's, it is narrated from Mapungubia. So today, I'm not alone, I'm with my brother. The one and only, I call him Musanda. So he's gonna introduce himself, and then we're gonna take it from there. Say, so. um, <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, my name is um, Polo Tepo Rasiala, um, but my first name is Isaiah. And um, since we are talking about who we are, I think okay. that's important. That's good, right? um, my first name is Isaiah. It's uh, it's a name I got prior to my birth, um, mm. a name I have carried along, but it's a name that's not mostly um, widely used except mm. um, in certain um, corners. I think that was very important. Um, who am I? Kemukwena. Kemukwena. Kemurok. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say mm. um, particularly because the conversation we're going to get into is going to interestingly perhaps highlight why oh, I don't want to say Kimupedi yes. at this point. But um, for interest's sake, in terms mm. of classifications, yes, Ngari um, Kimupedi. But Kimuroka, Kimukwena Midal Tlaka, Moroka means Yakul. Which means, Moroka means people who, who hail from the East. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, um, we, we believe in water, we are water people, mm. um, but not just any kind of water, but um, rain water. Rain water. Yeah. So, your waterfalls, your okay. rivers, um, you, you understand. Mm. So, yeah, that's who I am. Um, so, in terms of what we do, I mm. think we can get too into that at a later stage. I think yeah, in just no, brief. We'll, we'll talk my, about that. I just, have a, yeah. I just have a follow-up question mm. on um, <coughs> the water. Yes. The water people. Yes. Uh, are you somehow related to Aluwedu, the reigning queen? Uh, Let's talk about that. <laughs> yes, we are. Very much so. Um, um, I mean, throughout history, we we would classify ourselves in terms of tribal um, classifications in the modern day South Africa. Okay. Um, but it's actually not racial, racial. Oh. Um, and if you can look at something interesting, um, um, the queen, uh, although it's not the reigning queen because they've crowned yeah, a, a king, king now. Yes, um, yes. So, but the queen. Um, What's her name? What's her um, African name? The the the, the Queen Mujaji. No, uh, no, no, her name. There's a. Oh, you mean Mujaji the one, has become the family name? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The current queen, the young queen. You mean the one that was um, supposed to to have been the one that's ruling Rasana, now? Rasala Nabo. Masala Nabo. Masala Nabo. Okay, yes, yes, but her her royal name mm. is Makiala. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, in if you check in the mm. within the Mujaji dynasty. Mm. Uh, so, in if you check in the mm. within the Mujaji dynasty, mm. there's also a, 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 a you know a backtracked history of kings okay. who had ruled, and mm. one of them um, somewhere in 1400 to, to, to around 1600 mm. um, was Kiala. Kiala, okay. Yeah. So we would identify ourselves as Valove uh, as part of so shoot uh, Balozi or oh, Balozi. Yes. Oh, yeah. So yes. she took oh, uh, the name of someone. Yes. Um, being Makiala because she's not the male um, uh, Kiala. Okay. So she's Makiala. Oh. Yes. 
the queen. Yeah. Makiala means yes. um, it's a female figure of, of the, the same f- kind. Okay. Yes. No, I, no, I get yes. it. Yeah. So, so we we're talking <clears throat> about. Um, it seems like there's a there's a relationship uh, between Baluvedu and uh, Babedi, Ravenda. Yes, uh, there um, is. Um, just follow up the the, the, the whole history. Uh, it seems like uh, Wapidi, uh, Waluvedu are the descendants of uh, some of the Wavenda people. Yeah. Um, I've heard about uh, Waluvedi. Um, oh, yes. I don't yes, know if I can yes. actually link <laughs> them with that surname. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me more about that? <laughs> the, the relationship uh, Wavenda, Wapidi. Uh, and Valovedu. And Valovedu. Um, I think currently um, Kilobedu or Valovedu are classified as a, a group that um, their language is classified as a dialect of Sipedi and Chivenda. Okay. So it would argue that it's a combination of both. And um, obviously when you speak um, Kilobedu and when somebody speaks Venda, um, you can you can you can pick up a lot of phrases. There are a lot of um, things that I grew up um, hearing from the elders, um, more especially the elderly women, the way they would talk and the words they would use. For example, um, uh, locha. locha. Locha has been something that has been common, but mm-hmm. I didn't understand what it meant. I just thought it, it meant morning. like it's morning it, yeah. or it's. Like you understand, but I didn't understand that indeed it really translated to it is morning because okay. it was being used, you know, now transcribed into a, a language that was widely sipedi. So now you would have those words and you would have words like, oh, grannies there use plain or taba. Oh, okay. Yes, ndotamba. Uh, you you mm, understand. Mm, I get it. And when you go to sipedi, you find. Yeah, maybe bang bar koralok, bang bare kodlala. Depending on the dialects or where you're coming from or where you're hearing it from, mm-hmm. it's not otaba. That otaba is an ab, you know an adaptation from the vendor oh. um, form of. And there are many words like that and many phrases that show mm-hmm. that there is indeed a, a historical alignment between, between um, you know the current Balovedu mm-hmm. and the vendor um, tribe. But there's also a relationship that while doing some of the research in terms of, you know, the coming, the, the becoming of the tribe, um, because I think there's the settling of the tribe, the becoming of the tribe in its current setting, and there's the making of the tribe, yes. which where it came from. Yes. And I found very, you know, interesting relations because um, as they call themselves Balozi, mm, that is, yeah. <clears throat> There is a, a Rosy tribe, okay. a huge Rosy tribe. It's actually a Rosy kingdom okay. um, in Zambia. In Zambia, yeah, it had formerly had independence. It okay. had a government of its own, like your Lesotho, like, like your Swazi. Okay, yeah, it's just Similar that to to, to uh, Bavenda, Yeah, 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 the, yeah, the same guy, thing. Yeah. yeah. So what exactly? So what happened was when Zambia was getting independence, mm. they now amalgamated, including what the kingdom, including Venda. Oh. When we went into 1994, now it okay. became part of the incorporated South Africa. So that kingdom is still there, and there are still actually fights um, at courts, um, what wanting to to go back into being a kingdom. So the relation they call themselves not the Lozi, they call themselves the Rosi kingdom. Oh. But if you listen to their language. For example, a simple thing. Um, do you, you remember Victoria Waterfall cuts through Zambia, Zambia and Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe yes. On the other side of Zambia, it's what was the Rosy Kingdom, right? Oh, okay. Portions, of course, because they are in the in the <clears throat> east or west. I'm not sure um, of, of 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 Zambia. They don't call it Victoria Falls, the okay. fall, the waterfall. Okay. They call it. Musiwa Tunya. What does that mean? Musiwa Tunya means uh, a smoke is bursting. 
because of the smoke that comes out yeah, yeah because when when the water, water falls it heats and it makes when you are fire, it looks like there's some smoke something is burning okay. um, when when that effect happens so they call it musiwa tuny mm. and kaspedi ke musiwa tuny or kaslover ke musiwa tuny the actually meaning of uh, yes it that's it, how would say it wow okay this is super interesting so i want i want i want to know something because you you speaking of zambia yeah. as it seems to be there uh, where they originate yes. um, similar to uh, Wavenda, uh we speak about some they say they come from drc yeah, congo from congo yes yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and they they came through to yeah, here yeah. Um, and then Russia, we would tell you they um, hail from the east uh, yeah. from the middle east what would be the middle east now um, they would tell you that when they they took their voyages or their route um, wandering out of uh, Israel. Um, they went down to to the then Arabia, okay. then came through into Africa through the Horn mm. or what was then Abyssinia or okay. um, um, what was the the the. Ethiopia's pre, uh, preceding name before Abyssinia. Is it, is it, um, is it? Yeah, there was. These are the yeah. So they say they came through that route and mm -hmm. um, then went into your Sudans and yes. then came down. And you, if you look at their oral history and you look at the, you know, the evidence they give you that exists even now, mm -hmm. and you look at their surnames, you, you look at Sadiq, Sadiq, Sadiq or, yeah. or Sadiq. Sadiq, yes. Um, you, you go to your South Sudan, you'd find Sadiq with a Q at with the end. With a Q, oh, yeah. yes. Um, you, you, you understand. Right. You, right. and, and if you follow that path, mm. that surname alone, there are others, but mm. I'm just giving you a random example. You would find it traceable within within that route mm. and that's what makes our oral history you know so believable and more especially because it was consistent mm. while it's dismissal sometimes is the fact that we don't have literary or written books mm. as uh, the prerequisites or parameters that have been set mostly by eurocentric historiography yes, yes. to say your traces must come mm. from uh, but o also i mean even for them, most of their accounts are from mm. accounts of other scholars and travelers and prospectors who would say, I visited Egypt, and because no one in Europe before him had been in Egypt, um, whatever he says he had seen and Egypt is would mm. be what they see yes. Egypt is. And it was somebody's oral history just, you know, mm. transcribed into paper, and then because they could evidence it so, uh, with us, you know, they want to put us, cast us aside as if we came out of nowhere that's, that's with, with no, you know, relational history. So with with the Lobedus um, or the Roses, the Loses, um, there's that predicament, there's that existing relation. Mm. And um, I think, as we say, even our own oral history will tell us of, you know, relations with the, the reigning kingdoms oh. um, in, 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 in Venda. And, to, and towards um, their their journey into where they settled now, um, in in Wulobe, Wulobata. Uh, prior to where they are now in Ketagoni okay. or Stagoni. Stago. Uh, okay. It's written Stagoni, but it's Ketagoni, as the the most Kilobedu people would pronounce it from the area. Um, they resided somewhere in. A, you know, somewhere in, around a place in Mujajis Kloof. That, that place is so beautiful. Yeah. And, the um, hills yes, and yes. Oh, that, that actually they say Drakensberg Mountain, the longest mm. mountain, uh, goes even up to uh, Thingy, mm. um, Cape Town. It okay. starts there in, in, in Mujajis Kloof. Really? Yes. What was then called Devil's Kloof, which is an interesting name. And uh, we related to a topic we were talking about earlier. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about it later, or how <laughs> it came about to be called. Because mm. devils, we call it devil or devil, uh, oh. depending on people. Because, but it's devil's proof. Uh, D-U-I, because it was with, uh, from a Dutch background. But it's devil. So they say... They it's say, devil's proof. There's a history with the Dutchies. Yes. 
but we have to get to that. <laughs> That's why I said we will get to it okay. uh, at a later stage okay, because it's an interesting. I want us to stick to yes. to the um, to the kingdom and yes. the reigning of the the the, the queen. Yes. Um, let's say the kingdom yes, for the yes, king yes, now. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. How how was this kingdom made? Mm from the beginning yes. if you have that history yes. uh, where we have to we get the um, the categories of queens mm. reigning reigning mm. reigning mm. up until mm. now mm. and you are you know a queen doesn't carry a surname mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a man yeah, who carries, who carries a, a surname yeah. uh, let's talk about how if you have such information how they get to pass the surname to the next queen and all that uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting um, it's an interesting um, question and an interesting uh, study but we should remember that surnames are a, a craft of colonization That's very true. prior to very colonial administrations there was no necessity for surnames okay you you were Vosani uh, from Miruani, for mm-hmm. instance, Mwanawu, Mwanevane, Wunyi. You understand? They, 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 they will call you Nivusani mm. uh, and they would. It was ne- it was not necessary. Yes, a and, yes, and depending on social capital, if it's mm. your brother or your sister or your mother or your father who's mm. popular in your or who's relatable okay. um, to the people they would always reference you based on that. Oh, um, yes. So there was no need for surnames. Mm-hmm. It was just names, um, which is something that you can also find mostly reflected in, you know, your your Islam um, traditions, oh, yes. for example. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Mohammed bin, Aladdin bin. All of them so, are Mohammed. <laughs> yeah, it's, his name is Mohammed. Mm-hmm. That bin is, means son of. Oh, so okay. the second one is his father's name. The third one is probably his grandfather's You're name. So if it's Bin Bin, if mm. there's two Bins in the middle of his names, it means Muhammad, son and of Ahmed, of son, son of... You understand? Okay. Yeah, so there was no problem mm. in terms of the continuation. But I think perhaps what would be interesting is what was the community like? What that's, were the clans like? What were that. the tribes like? Mm. How were the other subordinate tribes or subjects or the other fiefs mm. um, or the other small um, clans, clans yes. that are under her wing um, felt? Because some may have been ruled by men. men. So what was their take on mm. power and continuation that is dependent on 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 femininity and or matriarchy okay. or what was their take of matriarchy and i think we would remember this is not just a queen this is the rain queen this is the rain queen is <laughs> someone who has uh, superpowers yeah uh, someone who um, oral history mm-hmm. and to the white people legend says she could starve um, she could drought her enemies and she mm. could wish uh, rain and, you know, or floods upon her enemies to wipe them out. Or she could wish, you know, good uh, or uh, something. Those ones that are... No, 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 it's... Nice rain that's meant for harvest. Oh, you know, okay. that's just pouring down into just into the a, ground. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no, is this floody mm. rains, but there's a phrase for it. So this is that kind of a person. So when you deal with the question of matriarchy, you also have to also deal with the question of can you withstand the power or the prowess that comes with matriarch, which is not just, you know, 
physical acumen and acquisition yes. of extras, mm. you know, uh, strategies or stratagems of war. No, no, no. This is a person who allegedly has um, supernatural powers that you probably have heard of, yes. have gotten confirmation of, have, um, you know, do believe in yourself. Mm. So would it be easier for you then to be a subject? I think if it doesn't affect the land I have and if it means I'm wished well and I can have rain when I asked for it mm. and I can also now be in a circle where my enemies can become their enemies then I can also get my enemies having drought in their area. Mm. I think I can <laughs> willingly subordinate and be a subject and have you be queen. And Tradition says um, she would marry women, and other king, yeah, and the kingdoms would, um, you know, offer their daughters or servants of the that. of the royal household. Um, but then the question would become: obviously, this is not Mary, uh, mother of Jesus. So the question of continuity inheritance also speaks to hers. How do they come about? Uh, and that is a, that is a very uh, it's an interesting um, um, uh, you know uh, take mm. because she would marry she would not be married I, I've heard about that so but you know there are many oral um, uh, you know dimensions on that and you know legends and myths and so forth and so on um, but obviously we understand that there would be a male figure that would be expected um, to continue with the bloodline and obviously would have been traditionally of um, required to be of some sort of bloodline. Male, that male comes within from within the family. Yeah, it, it probably yes, it comes from within the family. The because uncle the interesting is yes, that mostly it's alleged is the uncle. Because what's interesting is where the roots of this kingdom. Mm. So let me t quickly touch upon that. So it is, research says, and their oral history says, the, kin the kingdom hails from the great kingdoms of Mutapa. Mm. Remember the Mutapa Empire? Yeah, the Mutapa Empires, yes. Yes, yeah, so it is alleged that the first Mujaj was, um, you know, daughter of. Uh, Mwanam Tapa. Okay. Yes. Being daughter of Mwanam Tapa, Mwanam Tapa is son of Mdapa, so obviously, because of, yeah. his father mm. was a great uh, imperialist or empire or emperor. Mm. He would have had a lot of portion of land, and obviously, like they would do traditionally, sons would be given portions, some would rise into, you know, into being greater kings, some would, you know, destroy the empire, some would rise them even further. Yeah. So it is alleged that Mwana Mutapa had a, 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 a um, you know, a message, a vision being told to him uh, by, by his uh, royal priests. Okay. To say, his sons, one of his sons, are going to rise upon and want to take power from him. So okay. they are going to kill him. They're going to go against him. Yes, they will go against him. Mm. So he would need to get rid of his uh, uh, boy children. Mm. And oh. uh, yes, okay. you understand? Mm. To avoid the culmination of that dream into reality. Yes. So then... He, he he shares this um, with the wife and tells him and tells uh, her this uh, story. Mm. So and but apart from that uh, revelation alone, there was a request that the only way to sustain his uh, uh, throne or his empire or his bloodline would be to take one of his daughters mm. to bore him a daughter. Mm. Then that daughter is going to take... Yes. Okay. So his daughter-granddaughter 
would be the ultimate uh, messiah of the, you know his bloodline so uh, apparently the mother was not uh, fond of the idea at first um, and he tried it i think attempted with his first uh, um, daughter and didn't work out but uh, ended up having a concession and uh, that realization of his daughter uh, bearing him a daughter from uh, i think his second uh, uh, son it has been long since i i i i, I reread that uh, that research mm. and but the danger would still be looming so they would need to leave okay because there's one thing about us kingdoms are not a certain geographical location very true kingdoms are the people kingdoms, kingdoms are the people yes and the name is the people it's not also a geographical location uh, for instance you'd be told zatayakare mm. <laughs> you understand because when we leave we leave with our name because we live with our people and then we move to the new zata and we would go establish the zata where we are going if the world continues then we can establish another zata somewhere else yes. if there can be a relocation. when the zulus left kwabulawayo in kzn mm. the now kzn when they arrived they, they said it. here is going to be home then here will be kwabulawayo mm. because there was kwabulawayo because it's where shaka was slaughtering people so they were calling it Guabulawayo, where we get slaughtered. By Shaka. Yes, and uh, well, tragically, even there, there was massacres by the Shonas. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether it was a prophecy or it was just the bad luck of the name following mm. them around, but yeah. So that is, so uh, what I'm trying to show you is even the establishment of the kingdom itself had very bizarre or intriguing mm -hmm. but let's not say bizarre but in our common world in the 21st century it would be incest it would be bizarre obviously but when you look at most ancient histories you'd realize the egyptians were marrying their sisters yes. it was common, yes. it was common. For, yes. for cleansing royal blood for keeping it clean you understand mm. so um that would not have been as bizarre but as bizarre as it sounds, mm. would have been the establishment of the kingdom. Um, so even its continuation now, you you will realize. Obviously, there would still need to be some, you know. Okay, you know. just just a question. Um, I'm not sure. No, it's it's not even out of context. Yeah. But um, do you think this might be the end of the kingdom within the Walubedi tribe? That's what they're saying. So it's done. Yeah. So by giving us the king, you're saying we are done with the kingdom. Mm. It's it's sad. I, I'm, 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 there has to be something that has to be done for the kingdom to end. It's not just um, remember us as Africans. Mm. Um, we. We, we perform rituals. Mm, mm. Um, we we have our belief Ish. systems. There's a whole lot of things that needs to be done if for that. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, you see, that is the, the main queen. that is the main concern mm. that I have when I say it's sad. I'm not saying it's sad because I'm a fanatic of matriarchs and women who are powerful, and I, I find it interesting and you know. Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying it's sad because as a person who is fond of African culture, mm -hmm. who has followed African culture, who is fond of history as well, uh, I know of traditions, uh, traditionally rituals that needs to be performed, that we know can be performed only by women or only by certain people. Um, and the question is, while from a legal perspective, people would say uh, it's justified. 
because yes. if we are saying we are doing away with primogenitor uh, mm. um, inheritance, where in Wamita you set a precedence that yes. it's not just going to be male figures who are going to rise to the kingdom, even a woman is going to sit if mm. she's in the right to sit, if she's um, firstborn or whatever the case may be, the condition. So if you want to also continue the same precedence here in Venda. So legally, precedence would say, then even there we can change mm. the female into a male, yes. as much as the tradition there was female, female, female. Mm. And here and there in Wamitwa, the tradition was male, male, male. male, male. Um, so the changes in the left justifies the changes in the right. Yeah. But from a perspective of rituals, have we had that argument and debate with the it's, ancestors? It's, 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 it's really my problem now. I understand we have different religions and beliefs yep. because of um, the Europeans coming yep. and introduce yep. um, religions, yep. um, the Buddhism, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. the mosaic, yeah. all those things. Uh, some of us, we know Christians, yep. uh, but we haven't um, drive ourselves away from the history yeah. and the yeah. morals yeah. of who we are as yeah. Africans. Yeah. Um, I think we really need to be concerned about that uh, mm. because someone might be um, celebrating um, that whosoever mm. is now the king mm. of mm. Balovedu. Mm. But um, us as Africans, mm. uh, are, we really, um, are we really looking at the issue about how this might affect the future yeah. because um, as much as now the world is modern our ancestors <laughs> can never be modern we we know <laughs> we cannot modernize our we have we have holy forests yes rifo rina bakola gai gai bakola makonde you 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 understand um holy forests yes. as they are they are, they are said to be um, in English. Um, and then you would have um, characters such as your uh, Noah uh, Zatawa. You, you, you understand? Yeah, I, I understand and those things. Traditionally, yeah. we know they get supplied with some supplies. Uh, uh, and uh, where they stay at the top of the mountain is normally cleaned up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's well decorated with... Uh, uh, this um, cow dung, fresh cow dung, uh, the way we used to do in our hearts traditionally. Um, but the people who would do that, it's mostly, we are told, virgin girls. Yes. Um, we are not told virgin boys. It's virgin uh, girls. Yes. yes. Well, there are limited African traditions where some uh, rituals are performed by men. By men yes. I know of some um, cl clans where um, the people who do their rituals are men, not the women. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And they are t similarly, there are traditions where um, men b bear the same names of, of the women. Mm. Um, but, I mean, in this instance, we know what the tradition was. And that's why I'm saying my concern was exactly that. Mm. Have we dealt with the ancestral argument? Mm. Have we won it? Because, <laughs> oh, 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 I mean, conviction for people who live on earth comes in different forms. They always say man, every man has his own price. Mm. I mean, we can't be, they say, you know, royal, uh, um, you know, um, 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 hand, handovers or um, inheritances or, you know, uh, succession debates are not for commoners, but uh, um, there are certain things that we should question because we, it affects us. Yeah, it, it does. It, yes. uh, more especially because kingdoms are also about administration, mm. and they are about administration because they are not just about the governing of land. They are about the well-being of the people, the welfare exactly. of the people. So we must be concerned about whether we'll get rain. We must be concerned about. You, you understand? Mm. So and whether the rain will be controllable. <laughs> because it's not just about it's getting it to rain. It, yes. It's also about getting it to stop. I mean, we're having it now and yeah. our the roads are messed up and everything. Yeah. People, yeah. Uh, typhoons, mm -hmm. you know, cyclones, every now and then. But I mean, it, it, it's another concern. And I, I'm saying there are two sides to the coin. But 
um, I think we shouldn't take colonial precedences to determine our own, um, you know, traditional affairs. And I think that's where we've went wrong, because even in terms of in many places, most kingdoms and lineages were messed up deliberately mm. by colonialists, because they would take out the rightful king or rightful chief and install their own administrator for a chief. Personally, I wouldn't run away from um, from Venda and go somewhere yep. um, far. Yeah. The same thing happened yeah. in our tribe. Of course. Um, and um, we now have a dilemma, dilemma yeah. of yeah. what's really happening in Venda. We, yeah. we, we're just living and mm. Um, mm. we always question ourselves, mm. do you have a, a kingdom? Mm. Do you have a king? You know, mm. but let's leave that. Let's yeah. go back to a little You know, you know um, we're going to go back there. I think mm. the one thing that would have made this very easier, which is confusing the government, is they, they more especially now, our current government, because mm. I mean, the apartheid government, the colonialist government, they had their own plans, they had their own agenda. I mean, it worked for them. Worked what they were them. doing was their own machinery. But the Continuing with that in the, in, the, in the democratic dispensation is really dangerous. And I think the mistake that the current government has not made was restructuring how things are. And in terms of, you know, the vendor kingdom, for instance, there's no compilation for them, for, us, for, for the vendor people to have, uh, I, I nearly said us because I, I have a, a sort of a, a portion of, a, of vendor in me. So it's... It, we are not compelled to have one king. Okay. Which is how true. many Kosa kings do you know? Is is the same. Apart from the Kosa kings, there mm. are Abatembu. There's an Abatembu king. There's a. Uh, you, you understand? It's the same with Amampondo with, king. Uh, the, 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 because with the vendor, with the vendor that was there before. Exactly. You know. You know. You know. People. Um, don't understand um, the hierarchy of mm. um, um, our leadership within yeah, the, the yeah, Venda tribe. Yeah, yeah. They always feel like um, there, there was one king. Oh, yeah. No. It wasn't like that. No. It wasn't like that. Um, there was paramount chiefs. Yes. We speak about Wotoveri mm, um, mm. within the, 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 the Chivas and mm, this Wotoveri. Mm, 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 within within um, Badaud, mm, 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 una, una mm. within um, the, the, all those um, mm, mm. Ampepu, mm. you know, Ampapuri, mm. all those, and all those people. That's why they have this saying, Yaori, Kosei they believe they don't bow no, no, no. for each no. other because and do you know do you know why they were called paramount chiefs and not kings mm. because in colonial administration you couldn't have two kings we were subjects of king edward okay so well, how could we have another king here when your king is in england <laughs> you you are subjects of king edward mm. so anyone here is a chief mm. You can be, because we realized there was a structure that existed before, and we realized there would be other chiefs, mm. and they can't be of the same level with you, or then we would say you are a paramount chief. You rule your Who people would just not in say, your land. Yes, we would just not say you are king. Because those titles were restored back after 1994. Mm. No one was king, or more especially in Africa, except King Selassie. Mm. But, but you know um it's it's um i actually hate colonialism i i i hate it with passion uh because of how it messed up our mm. our our people from the leaders to who we are today um i understand there's a whole lot of good things yeah. that looks yeah. good yeah. um you should get that a lot of good things that actually looks that good that looks good you know that yeah, are happening within that's us. their purpose they just yeah. have to look good and and, and the thing is as they, 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 they preached their their ideologies mm. to mm. us mm. and they leave us with those ideologies and then we continue to spread them with it amongst ourselves and they they continue to destroy who we are what we are 
and it's going to affect generations to come if there's not going to be a voice that it's going to speak against that and restore who we are people keep on saying we cannot go back to the way w- the mm, world was mm, mm, but the mm, question is mm. if you can go back to the how the world was where are you going mm. if you don't understand where mm. you are coming mm. you are coming from because there is a journey we need and, to arrive and if we cannot just leave and the funny thing is if you ask the same people how was the world they are going to give you a Eurocentric painting it of was. a backward barbarian <laughs> society <laughs> it was that to them. was just going around in ancient gestures or songs, uh, not knowing what is mm. or what civilization is. And that's a lie. That's a complete lie. Because if you look at our own medieval history mm. of your Mapungwe um, 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 empires, for example, just a random example, mm. you'd realize. That was that was civilization par excellence, and that in terms of administration also in governance. Mm. I mean, our trade routes existed way, way prior to before. the white men discovered that this is a habitable land. We traded with the Chinese, with the Indians. I, I mean, I'm just saying there was so much greatness prior to, and because I wanted to 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 come to to what you were saying because it's very important because the biggest you know crisis or challenge for the modern day youth in the 21st century is the identity crisis more especially for the african i i someone said to me back when i used to lecture um history at at at, uh, at the university um why why history i mean you can do a lot of things and you seem to have a wide <laughs> interest but why history and i said to them i feel as a person who grew up like in history i didn't do history in high school mm-hmm. um i did sciences okay but i would run from class and go to the library to go get a history book just to read mm. because i loved history and i loved going around to the grannies and listening to yeah. to stories from so i realized i had that passion and my biggest fear is there's a disconnect between the elderly generation that's been wiped out by nature. Mm. Old age comes and you can't refuse it. One thing that's guaranteed for man is when he's born, he has to die someday. The generation that follows after, the one that's in their meads, mm. they might have at least uh, those who are in their 60s and 70s, they, they, would, they would have acquired the information from the generations that preceded them. Mm. But are they finding interest in imparting it to mm. anyone after them? And if they have the interest, are they those that are inquisitive enough to go drink from these wells, mm. from these sages, and understand how our way... Because in tradition and culture, it's not just our clinging and our love for history, yes. that we just love using colonialism for every reason. It's because we were we were detached from our own values, mm. from our mores, from our ways of life. Because that's what our customs and traditions means for us. Mm. And it, 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 it requires you to wipe yourself out, this, mm. this civilization that they brought. Mm. It, it, it requires you to cleanse yourself out, come out of your skin, leave yourself there mm. and become some completely different mm. it doesn't require you to grasp from it what you find interesting and advanced and merge it with what you already know is mm. sustainable and good for you or yeah. right for you because there are certain things that are good or look good but are not good for our society yeah that's true how many civilization or infrastructures were built in areas that were forbidden and what's happening with those infrastructure? And what's happening with the, with the, with the civilizations mm. around them, the societies around mm. them? So it's, it's one of those things where the reason I'm saying there's a, there's a huge problem with that identity crisis is because a modern day young person mm. will not tell you who they are, where they come from, they or where their people come they from. They can't. Just a simple person. And that gives us a concern. Because let's look at this country or this continent 
in the next uh, 30 years when these ones that have managed to solicit it's, it's a, from the elders that came before them it's already, are wiped out it's already started happening i mean it's only it's only the 90s i, I always uh, speak of um four generations mm -hmm. uh, if not three i speak about um the generation of the 70s yeah, yeah. to the 90s yeah. and then we speak about the 90s to somewhere 98 yeah um, 97, mm. but from 97, 98, yeah, then we yeah, jump into yeah, the millennium. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's we were reaching case. out now. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the two cases. Yeah. And then when those ones, those are the ones who are, who are really affected by mm. the issue of identity mm. price. They're, and and you look at they're, they're the ones who are really turning the world around. Upside down. They're like, mm. you, you know why? Because much event that I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going and this this man that I love so much, he wrote a book called Udiwama Kurundu Wood. I meaning to, to, for you mm. to know your granny, mm. you have to be told about mm. your granny. And nobody is telling this 2K generation about their grannies. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna adapt to the each and every thing that comes their way. Um, the, the way they dress, the way they address even the their, their elderly people, the way they, they, they fight the, the government, the way they feel they have so much power to speak looking at a person who's older than them in their face. Because with, my, with my, 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 my culture, you're not allowed mm. to look, to, to speak back at your parent looking straight in their eyes. That's disrespect. Mm. Mm. But the two cases, they were definitely... And you don't talk back to your parents. You don't even talk back. Mm. But all those things are, are, are like happening now. Things and that are wiped out. You know, when, when, the, when, when the Europeans um, preached um, apartheid, or when they, they preached um, colonial... In colonialism, yeah. yeah. to us, they didn't only just preach it. They preached it and they took something within us from our heart. They took something and they hold it and they left it with it and they throw it away. And they left that hole within they, our heart. They took the spirit of the African man and left him with the body. Because that's what they needed. They needed the body yeah. for the labor. And his spirit Yo, was troublesome. Babe, his spirit would be very troublesome yeah. for them. His spirit would want to reason. His spirit would want to rise up and rebel. And that's Bible, something they didn't want. The Bible, the Bible speaks about um, you, you. You can harm his body, but um, you, you don't touch his spirit. Meaning, there's so much power with the spirit than the body. The one thing, of course, man. I mean, this is just flesh, yes. dog. This yes. is, I mean, this is nothing. Mm. To show that it's nothing nowadays, we can transform it. I mean, you can go to a plastic surgery. I come back looking white like Michael Jackson, <laughs> or I can come back. I, you, you, I mean, you can transform it in every but kind of way. But you transform the spirit. The spirit. And that's who once, you are. Once, you, if it's transformed, it means it's broken. Sure. It means it, like literally, it has been torn, and that's what has been done to the African man because. Even in this following of trends, mm. remember what trends are. Trends are, you see a river, mm. when the river flows. The river flows. Yeah, those are trends, you, you understand? Yes. So when you are going with trends, you're going with the flow, and you don't oh, control yourself. You don't Whatever it takes you, you, just, you go, you, you understand? Go. It throws you from this river one at the, throws you into to another, to do, do. You, you, you understand? <laughs> Yo. But the destination is one, mm. the sea or the ocean, because that's where it's all settled. Yeah. That's where it all meets. That's, perhaps that's where it all starts, because yes. that's where it would end. Yes. Um, that's why it doesn't ever start in an end. Mm. But what happens is there you are nothing now. The waves are just hitting you. you just you are lucky if you find waves, <laughs> because they'll do some activity, and which is where now the confusion starts. Because mm. today you are this, tomorrow you are it's that. Yeah, you, you understand. Mm. And one day you see it and you ask, "What am I?" 
because that's the main question who are we yeah and i think this this is um the main reason i, I feel like this is the reason why i i got this idea yeah. rooted in yeah. africa yeah. because the question the main question we should always ask mm. ourselves mm. it's who who am i yeah as vusi mm. mm. and if if i could understand who am i then i will know where i'm going yeah you clearly and you'd be at peace and even when you have not arrived because you know where you're going you don't panic you don't have anxiety issues mm. you, you, you're calm mm. you you have what the what in the the expression they have in english is you have it all figured out yes you don't have identity crisis you don't have identity crisis you you know who you are and you don't have a problem with other people they are who they are mm. and you're fine with them you don't want to be them mm. because you are fine with who you are mm. and you embrace yourself for who you are and that's where the idea of black consciousness rose from yeah. because it was to conscientize one of himself so that they can be they can love themselves so much that they don't feel consent with who they are to a point of feeling they could walk out of the skin mm. and become something else mm. they are content so unfortunately for the modern day african mm. um you know i find the issue of identity crisis very interesting i I did a course um for for a masters when I was in Japan. Mm. Um it was called cross cultural ident uh, cross cultural communication. So one of the biggest um issues there was um, the issue of identity. And I remember I wrote a piece there. I said to them, the funny thing is for an African I have never been African until I lived mm. outside Africa. I wasn't African enough in Africa, Yo. especially for a young person from South Africa, because Africa says we are not African because we don't have a cultural backbone, Yo. we don't have a cultural identity. Mm. To embrace ourselves so as to even feel better about this exclusion, so that it, because mm. to us it implies the inclusion into the global world. Yes into europeanism mm. into you know what is good what is whiteism we are now deassociated from what is africa the 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 roman flies on top mm. of a child who's got kwashia core Quash. with a huge belly you, you, you understand we feel no 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 we're not africa we're mm. south africa there's south africa Af and the south, south africa, africa. <laughs> you understand we embrace it because we we, we want mm. to be included somewhere so we're fine with the exclusion from african they even say they even say you even um, you should go to africa and see oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, and we are like, we're, we're in south, south africa, africa and no, the people would africa. say you should go yeah, to africa and rwanda, yeah, 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 yeah west africa yeah. not even rwanda they are talking about the picture they've seen yeah, on the internet yeah. which the yeah. media wants to preach mm. to them so that they could keep on rejecting yes. who they are yeah so and i said to them the modern day young person does not know what it means to be african i meet with a lot of people now here who have never met an african before mm. and i can see how amazed they are and they want to quench their thirst of knowledge yeah. about this african but little do we know about ourselves you know you know if it's not just our history like who we are as a black people how content we are as an african people because we shouldn't have been we shouldn't be studying who we are this thing we should, should have been growing yeah we should it. be portraying africanism somebody should be looking at us and seeing africanism mm. but hey well we you know we, this is little europe as they mm. call it outside um in africa and we're so even proud of it yeah they in africa they call it little europe and that's what we and i mean you can never be better than europe i mean because you you're going to have to emulate them, mm. which means you would have to wait for them to do things so that you can do them but was 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 the world supposed to be the way it is today no 
looking at the creator the main man oh. god in the beginning created mm. the heaven and mm. the earth mm. do you think he created it to go with the formation and the transformation of how things are now was was is 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 it his will for things to go the way they are going now or this someone's will that is trying to dominate who's on the wheel like like who's on the wheel whose will is exactly. is it that yeah be, 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 because i believe god created all of us mm. with our own identities and all those things and there's someone who came and made this whole world you to know, mess up you know world. you know you know you're you're touching a very interesting topic and uh, I'm afraid I have a lot of knowledge and I don't want to derail you from this topic because I have this a lot I've we'll done a lot of research on that mm. because oh but even the bible and um an easier reference I can give you I would say there has been contact mm. there has been interference let me not just say contact yeah, yeah, because contact yeah. has always been there there has been interference yes and m most theological and literary works would tell you would give you evidence of those i mean different accounts from mm. different civilizations even to show that this is real mm. like i'm talking you find the stories of interferences being narrated by arabians by egyptians mm. by your caribbeans you understand in west africa by the mummy people by the mummy water people mm. um, you you come you come a recent um, issue your, your credo motor for yes. example credo the, yes. the, the sanusi mm. would have narrated the stories of how there were entities that in came visited every now and then human beings to give them knowledge to teach them ways some were bad ways some were ways of mm. killing each other some were ways of making weapons um, a biblical uh, or theological reference would tell you about how watchers oh yeah once descended into mm. earth to meddle with the sons and daughters of men mm. and from that meddling because they had liked they had lasted upon um, the daughters of men, of men yes. uh, when they slept with them, mm. um, giants and you know other creatures were born. But apart from those who were just intrigued by the idea of the daughters of men or the daughters and sons of men, mm. some came not to sleep with them. Some came to teach them things. Oh yes. So to say. Uh, but there was the book of Enoch tells us um, there was punishment there for was those. Punishment um, yes, yes um, be, because the book of Enoch goes into into um, you know description um, when he was working with the Elohim, mm. uh, uh, the powerful ones. Yeah, the powerful ones. Um, when they showed him um, the narrative, how how it happened and how they got punished and so forth and so on, um, there would have been interference. But uh, as a believer in creationism, that God was in charge and with his will and with his word commanded all that is, mm. I want to believe this is a master craftsman. And I sometimes see things that are happening that I would want to believe are not right and so are not his will. But... I would want to believe that he's still in charge he's still and in that charge, he would have even predicted even some of the things that, that would have happened yeah. let me give you a, a simple example for example and something that i randomly say um, on socials um like with with friends um when we talk about you know god as a as a powerful figure mm -hmm. and i say to them you think god couldn't have predicted that his son samael or lucifer as we know him today would have rose against him and mm. protested against the creation of men. I think, as a matter of fact, he did it, he knew and let it happen mm. uh, for it served its own purpose, just as Christ would die. I mean, there were ways that he could have been empowered, mm. shielded, you, you understand, but the purpose that yeah, was. Yeah. And with the devil, it would be him, you know, protesting. Uh, would reveal even those that are dissatisfied, that are mm. conniving probably behind God 
And now that they have found a figure, they will support. Mm. But it doesn't mean they didn't have the ambitions prior or they didn't have the dissatisfactions or you, you understand mm. uh, they were not going to rebel at some point against the government. Uh, but this way, also, this one gets banished mm. to come where? Here. Where he is going to because his banishment is torment, mm. he's going to be on guard. Okay. He's at work, mm. as a matter of fact. He will still be bitter. He will connive. Mm. But he's conniving and his punishment of all of God's creation. For his fury, it will remind us that there's somewhere where we can find rescue. Mm. But should there be no way that we would be tormented, mm. there's no way that we will remember this, this man. There would be no need. Mm. I mean, would I mean, wake up with honey and milk. I mean, you, you understand. We bath in bathtubs, in swimming pools full of milk and other uh, aromatic flowers mm. from all the faunas and floras you can think of around this world. There would not be any need for us to okay. constantly remember that man. It's, it's, it's like we will reach our conclusion. Mm. Would you agree that? Um, everything that is happening it's more spiritual than physical yes and that's why many people i keep on failing mm. to bring solutions mm. because they're tackling these problems that are happening in this modern world in a phys with a mm. physical solution mm. more than mm. the spiritual mm. because i believe everything starts spiritual even a problem starts spiritual and then it manifests physical. Mm. So I, I even human beings mm. they become they become spiritual beings prior to their birth. Because you are created before you are made. made yes. You are made by your parents, but you are created by entities be from beyond. Um, for believers of um, folklore or traditional Africanism, it would be your ancestors. For mm. believers in creationism, it would be God created mm. you. As generally, we prophesize in Jeremiah 29 uh, that I, I created you yeah. uh, and I knew you before you, before you were born. You were born yeah. And we would see this with, sometimes you'd have People would tell you, oh, no, my ancestors visited me before I knew I was pregnant and they mm. told me uh, I must name the child who, who uh, or I knew I was going to have a, ch a child before I even conceived. Uh, you understand? Because the idea of you, mm. the spiritual idea of you, your spirit existed prior to your physical existence. Mm. So... By the time the flesh takes place as a vessel to carry the spirit, because the spirit is not going to die when the vessel dies. Mm. The spirit lives on. If you believe in heaven, you would realize that heaven would be a spiritual character. Obviously. It's not a place where you, if, if it has to be reached upon death, or those who reached it prior to their death, it was in visions. Mm. As Isaiah would tell us, it would mean it's a spiritual and um, 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 location. Mm. So it means the spirit is very important mm. in determining, you know, the me, myself, and the I. Me. Yes. And I think uh, science tells you there are three portions, in, especially in, for, in philosophy, they say mm. there are three portions of it of a person. And I think even the me, myself, and I, I describes the, yes, because okay. the I is the I, the is I the is soul. not you. It's the, not. It's the spirit. The myself, yes, the myself. Uh, me, you, you understand. Uh, the me is myself. The body. But in reference to what people see, yes, they see me. Me, yes. You understand. You. Myself yeah. is how I see myself. Okay. The I is how. The inner man reveals mm. both me mm. and myself. It's three parts of a human being. That's why that soul, mm. so to be told, yeah, they are ghosts. Hey, he didn't cross over. Uh, he had unfinished business. Because he unsettled, that spirit still wants to pursue. If you want it 
in terms of African tradition, we know how powerful spiritual diagnosis has been. Yeah. When you go to a traditional healer we, or a herbalist, because those are two different um, characters. Yes. A herbalist would have dreamt of you coming dressed the way you are <laughs> dressed. Story, uh, and he would have prepared what you are coming uh, to request for. Although you don't know what you are going to request for. Uh, perhaps at that time you don't even know you are just perhaps uh, having pains or you, 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 things are just messed up you don't even you are not even aware mm. of what's going on he must diagnose you from a spiritual point of view mm. he must see you spiritually prior to seeing you mm. as a man and we know how powerful african spirituality has been yes and that's one thing that has been done successfully by colonialism they had to first take all the cut off that spiritual alignment mm. so that he's not one you see when the terrorist uh, interrogators or police officers or detectives says i've broken him mm. uh, he's telling me the truth he has betrayed their people mm. uh, he, he, they've broken your spirit so, I would agree that most of our problems are spiritual because we have not taken care of that aspect. Yes. And I think that's one thing that we are lacking in and that's one thing that would resolve most of our problems. Because even for Christianity, for example, we have made Christianity a religious aspect mm. instead of a spiritual aspect. When you say, that's why I love identifying as an Orthodox Christian. Um, and most Orthodox Christians are found in Russia and Ethiopia. Okay. But I'm not subscribing to those churches, uh, of course, because they are far. Mm. But Orthodox, because Orthodoxy is about tradition. And Christianity is about this story, this narrative, and this belief that there was a man so great that his life inspires one, that he should wish to live like him. Mm. But that is about talking to the inner self, how I want myself or I to be shaped. Mm. The spirit man. I want I to be a very good and holy person. Mm. That's the spirit. And that it develops a desire. And that's why most Rastafarians, when when they have them, it's I and I, I. Uh, <laughs> you, you understand? They are saying, yeah. I'm, in con I'm in a position where my thoughts, I'm content with my inner person. Mm. Okay, that is, that, the I and I. Yes, and, and uh, what did God say to Moses when, when he said, who, 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 who do I say sent me? Mm. He said, say, I am. I, I am. Sent who you. I am. Hmm. Okay. I am sent to you. Hmm. So this issue, it's about identity. Yes, and he said even himself that I created you in my images. Or, or as Genesis would say, in our image. image because yes. it is the idea that it, it was the council of image. creation. Yes. Um, yes. So, Africans, we know of prophecies, we know of, you know, traditional healing our spiritual alignment were always on point mm. even for the colonialists to conquer us they first had to break our spirit that's true so that is one thing that we need to go back to which of obviously uh, you know as we were all discussing throughout uh, Hey, touches a lot of uh, of the aspects yeah. we were, we were uh, talking because about. I, would, I would really love us to 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 go um, deep into mm, mm. Um, the belief system yeah. itself, um, who we are as Africans when it comes to yeah. the belief system, yeah. um, what we used to form, mm, what we mm, believe in, mm, and mm. Um, how important it was to mm, do mm, certain things, mm. uh, like the issue of initiation schools. Um, oh, yeah, you know the dentists. Uh, in Shivenda we have Chikona, mm, you know, mm, there's an mm, old man I once visited mm. and we spoke about um, how Chikona 
um, it's spiritual. Mm. Um, this mm. is spiritual side of Chigona. Mm. You mm. don't just be Marugwane, mm. that man who leads in front oh. there. So we, we, we're going to talk about all mm. those things. Mm. Um, we, we're going to get down to that. Yeah. But for yeah. today, I think, yeah. l- 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 let's call no, it No, I off. think, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's quite a lot to talk mm. about. I would agree with you. And for today, I think, mm. uh, let's <laughs> agree that the cup uh, for today would be would be a little filled, yes. uh, half full, half filled, or half uh, empty, mm. uh, so that we can fill it the next time as well. Thank so, you, thank you so much. Yes, for, it has for, been a for pleasure. joining, for joining me. And uh, I also hope that um, you know mm. um, this can continue also, and you know, reach out to other, um, you know, historians and Most other definitely. narrators and so forth, so that we could have something mm. to leave. But um, this is we we're doing this yes um, because not just for that, the funny part of yes it. that's that it disconnect has to continue. that disconnect mm. perhaps we could bridge it with this yeah There's the settling of the tribe, the becoming of the tribe in its current setting.